Hey guys, welcome back. This is part three of my 105mm quadcopter build. In the last video we saw that it was all flying with the FPV working. However, due to a bit of an accident, I managed to actually break one of the motors. So in this third and probably final video, what I'm going to do is replace the motor that I broke. And I'm also going to just tweak the settings within clean flight just to add a little bit more yaw rate which should hopefully make it fly just a little bit better. Okay, so I've already taken the top off the quadcopter. You can actually see the shaft of the motor moves freely. That's obviously an indicator of a bit of the issue. And there just as I've opened the frame up that little bit more the actual body of the motor has just fallen straight out so it's become detached from the bottom just need to ease the broken bottom of the motor out quite tricky because obviously you can't get your fingers in and it's quite a, a tight fit it's all just friction fit so this did take a little bit of effort obviously I was trying not to break the frame didn't want to Force the frame parts apart too far where they actually cracked. So, there we go. The actual top part of the motor is detached from where the electric comes in, and obviously that no longer works. Got a brand new one, just one that I'd already ordered. So I had some spares. My plan of attack for this is basically desolder the original one. I'm just going to remove some of the original solder and then simply just resolder the new one in, in its place. So soldering iron heated up. Obviously this is quite fiddly work again. There isn't a lot of room for moving. Made even more tricky by the camera. So fairly easy just to, to dab them just to actually remove it. But I'm actually going to, as I say, just mop up some of the solder. This is a little device called Gootwick or something like that. It's, it's basically a wick for solder. Um, you actually melt the solder underneath the actual ribbon and that just wicks a solder into it leaves the pads fairly clean it's it's not obviously removing all the solder but it's enough that you can add some more for uh, for the next cables going on ease the motor down into the holder making sure that you're not going to catch the cables and damage them Again, this is very fiddly. I've got some little tweezers here which help me manoeuvre the cables. As this is quite tricky, um, I'm going to do this just out of shot. Not necessarily on purpose, but there we go. Okay, so that's soldered in place. Just need to pop the propeller off the old one. It was actually quite a tight fit, so I did have to use um, quite a bit of force to get them off but that's not necessarily a bad thing okay so that's back together as it should be just going to give it a quick test before I fully reassemble it attach a battery to it make sure it's connected up to my transmitter and there we go all the props spin Excellent. So as I mentioned I wanted to add a little bit to the yaw rate. I've got the the quadcopter just on the side on my PC. So it's simply a case of going into the PID tuning and then it's simply a case of increasing the yaw rate. I've gone with 0.4. I did try 0.6 but I found that to be a bit too aggressive. Obviously you can tune this to exactly your own choices. Give it the usual save and then you're free to disconnect. 
and again it may benefit from some further pitch tuning. Okay so first few flights it's actually up in the air which is a good start. One thing I did find now is that it drops quite a lot faster than I would expect when yawing. Got any tips or anything to combat the amount of drop whilst yawing? Feel free to post in the comments. I'm happy to give it a go. Probably needs a little bit more tuning here and there. Quite interesting there, you can actually see the ants running around on the ground. Okay, so as you can see, I've not really got the hang of this yet, but it's up and it's flying, and I'm pretty sure with a little bit of time just to adjust to it, it'll be flying wonderfully. Other than that, I'm going to be practicing. And I've managed to hit my dinosaur. Okay, so thanks for watching part three. Don't forget to check out parts one and two if you haven't already. I've put the full list of all the parts that I've used in the quadcopter down in the description below. There's been some discussion on parts one and two of potentially a better choice for some of the parts. Check back soon for more videos. Don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe. And we'll see you again soon.